Now here you can see that she's standing very close to the background. So let's see what happens when we take this shot. As far as the settings go, I'm using a shutter speed of 1 by 100 here to counter the camera shake. We've already seen in the last video how the reciprocal rule works. So since I'm using the 85mm f1.8 lens, the shutter speed should at least be 1 by 85. So I'm using 1 by 100 just to be very short. And since I'm shooting an ample amount of light, I really don't need to make the shutter speed slower here. Now as far as the f-stop number goes, I need to use the minimum most f-stop number that this lens can go to, which is f1.8 because ultimately I'm looking to blur the background. Then just make sure that the focus point is on her face. And then the third thing we need to see is where the light meter is pointing at. So right now as you can see that slightly towards the negative side, so we can increase our ISO just a bit till it comes in the center. So you can see that when I go to ISO 320, it's in the center and now we're all ready to take the shot. So we'll focus on our model and we take the shot. So you can see that in this shot, the background does not seem too blurred and in fact it seems in focus, even though we were using a very small f-stop number like f1.8. Again, this was because she's standing too close to the background, so the background is well within the depth of field, even at a small f-stop number like f1.8. So let's see how we can solve this problem. So let's see what happens when she moves away from the background this time. Let's go inside our camera. The settings will pretty much remain the same, but if you just observe the light meter, this time it's slightly gone towards the positive side. That's because the new position that she moved to had more amount of ambient light than before. So that's not a problem because we can just lower our ISO to get the meter back in the center. And once that's the case, all we have to do is take this shot. And this time what you'll find is that we've got a much better looking shot. Let's see the shot. So this time you can see that the background looks really out of focus as compared to the first shot. That's because she has moved away from the background and the background therefore has gone away from the depth of field and hence looks more blurred or out of focus which is isolating our subject in a much better way as compared to this shot which was our first shot where the background seemed in focus and does not really look good. So remember make sure that your subject is away from the background to blur it more. Now there's another point that you have to remember which is something that we'll be discussing now. Now the second thing to keep in mind if you want a background that is really out of focus and blurred and which really isolates the subject very well is to make sure that you go close to the subject when you take a shot. So in the first step we learned that the distance between the background and the subject should be as much as possible if you want to blur the background. But what about the distance between the photographer and the subject? This time is the opposite. The closer or the lesser this distance is, that means the closer the photographer is to the subject, the more blurred the background will be. This is how optics work. So how can you come to know whether you've gone close to the subject or not? You can do so by noticing the space or the negative space around your subject. For example, here you can see that there is a lot of space on the left and right side of her. That means there is room to go closer to her. Now, we have three options when it comes to going close to the subject. One is you can physically walk close to the subject. Second is if you're using a zoom lens, you can zoom in. Or the third option is that you can also ask your subject to move closer to the camera. Here we'll take the third option because this will solve two things for us. One is that our subject will become closer to us. And secondly, she'll move even further away from the background, which will increase the blur as we've already seen before. So let's ask her to come close to the camera. Now as she comes closer, you'll have to change your shooting style from landscape to portrait format to get her inside the frame fully. This is why when we're shooting portraits, we usually shoot in the portrait format so that we can fit our subject very well and there is not much of a space around her. So this time you can see that there is less of negative space around her. That means we have been able to go really close to her. So now if we take the shot using the same settings as before, you'll see that this shot looks much better than the previous two shots. So let's look at this shot when we expand it. So this time you can see that the background looks even more out of focus and our subject looks way more isolated than the previous shots. That's because not only is the background away from her this time, we've also, we're also following the second step this time, which is that we have managed to get close to her while shooting. And how can you come to know whether you've gone close to something? By looking at the space around them. This time you can see if you observe the space around her is very less as compared to the previous shots. 
That's why this particular principle is also referred very popularly in photography as filling the frame. So if you manage to fill the frame with the subject, that means your subject is dominating your frame and there's very less of space around your subject. That means you've managed to go close to the subject. That is why it's very important to fill the frame with the subject when you take a shot, especially when you're looking to isolate your subject and blur the background. So just once again, let's see all these three shots and see how changing different things help us get better shots. This was the first shot that we took. And the mistake that we made here was that she was too close to the background. So even though we were using a small f-stop number like f1.8, we could not really make the background go out of focus. So we solved that by moving her away from the background. And this time, again shooting at f1.8, we managed to blur the background well. But in the third shot, we even improved this much more by filling the frame. That means we reduced the distance between the subject and the photographer and that resulted in even a more out of focus and blurred background and in this case, the isolation was even better than the last shot. That's great. So I hope that this exercise helped you to understand what are the different things that go into effectively blurring the background in your portraits or any other similar shot. So one is using a small f-stop number to get a shallow depth of field. Second is making sure that your subject is away from the background. And the third point is filling the frame. Once you perform all these three steps, you can take very good portraits in which your subject is very well isolated from the background. At this point, I want to congratulate you because you've finally completed learning all three settings inside the manual mode. You've done with ISO, you've done with shutter speed, and now we're finally done with aperture. Of course, from the sections that follow, things will get slightly more challenging because we'll finally start taking shots where all these three settings are used. So of course, I'll be seeing you in those videos. So right now, on behalf of Manisha, our model, and me, Kush Sharma, bye for now. I hope that you like this video. This video is from my DSLR Photography for Beginners course, which is available via Udemy. And as you can see in front of you on Udemy, it has a rating of 4.8. It has 45 videos and almost six hours of video content. And it doesn't matter whether you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, this course will help you master your camera and photography. So in case you like this video, you wanna check out the whole course, do give it a go. The link will be given in the description. I hope to see you inside the course.